Reason TV has put out a new one here. Uh, granted, this is a couple weeks ago, but I just came across it. Don't abolish the police. Privatize them. Now, as an anarchist, as a, as a socialist, uh, I don't like the idea of privatizing uh, anything, but particularly not the police. And it's also worth noting that uh, while I do wish for the abolition of the police as they exist in our country today, I feel that uh, it's better to shoot for a defunding of the police so that they can uh, more easily and better serve the community. Uh, you know, th there are certain things in our current society which police alone can deal with can handle so i think they should be allowed to do that not be forced to handle the myriad other things which they are called on to handle and they are uniquely unsuited to handle either due to a lack of training or because their training uh would lead them to do basically the opposite of what is uh, helpful in these situations so let's hear reason tv's uh case for privatizing the police uh so reason tv Take it away. Tell me something right now that the police are good at, other than whooping ass. A lot of us were asked if we could imagine a future without police, and I answered yes to that question. One even broader idea that's gaining momentum right now is defunding the police. Instead of abolish the police or defund the police, how about privatize the police? Yes, let's privatize the police and give them uh, no public oversight, just the oversight of the company that owns them. That has no possible repercussions. Let's give police all of their power and immunity they have now, but now not even the veneer of public response and, and oversight. Yeah, that, that seems great. <laughs> Holy shit. The policing is not... Uh, a marketplace. You can't choose another police force to take care of you or to watch over your neighborhood. Actually, private policing is more common than most people realize, and it's a proven way of making law enforcement more accountable to the communities they're paid to protect. A lot of only if you can afford to hire a different police. Di Holy shit! Yeah, private police are fine for wealthy communities who can afford to shop around and find the best rates for their policing. But what about poor neighborhoods? What about, uh, what about even not just, you know, abject poverty neighborhoods, but neighborhoods where everybody's doing okay, but they don't have a lot of extra. How do they afford to, uh, to buy a private police force? And are they going to get exemptions from the taxes which go to pay for the police? I mean, th this... And what's to stop if we do eliminate uh, public police and go with only private military forces, which is a fucking cyberpunk dystopia if ever I heard one, how do we stop the police from doing what companies do in capitalism and while not directly colluding in a, you know, you do this, I'll do that, you just recognize each other's areas and stay out of them. Like we do with uh, uh, telecoms or with uh, health insurers or with any other corporations that provide things that people need. Not saying people generally need the police, but in our current society, they do serve a purpose, even if they do other things besides. What's to stop uh, uh, Lone Star Security and uh, Night Errant uh, Police Force from just... Actually, there are two possible outcomes from a uh, from fully privatizing the police force, and neither are good. One is one where there's no competition. You're basically stuck with whoever the city buys in the area. And if they suck, there's no real repercussions or recourse to fix them. Or you only have one choice because they've bought out all the others. 
people think that law enforcement specifically must be provided. This is an issue not related to policing, but just related to business that I've seen a lot of particularly libertarians and caps say that I just don't fucking understand. Why do you think if we remove regulations from the market, if we just leave it completely open, what is stopping businesses who already have millions or billions or soon trillions of dollars from taking over the market and preventing anyone else from breaking into it, or at least severely limiting the growth of anyone who does manage to break into it if they, if they somehow manage to. Like, just about every business you would want requires some sort of resource, whether it's raw materials, manpower, knowledge, whatever. If you can get a monopoly on one of those by buying up exclusive rights to them, buying the businesses that produce the raw materials, or what have you, you strangle any competition in the cradle and essentially have a uh, a free reign of the business. I've seen ANCAPs make this argument that small businesses will help uh, democratize the world and keep corporations honest, but there's no reason to believe that small businesses would be able to be anything other than like uh, what we used to call a shade tree mechanic or a, a side hustle because you can't get access to the resources, especially at scale, to create a business big enough to compete with the established corporations. Even in our current regulated market, the regulations aren't what keep people from competing with Amazon and Facebook and Walmart and McDonald's and Verizon. It's their size and their ability to negotiate on scale and their ownership or uh, long-term uh, leasing of resources such as delivery, uh, warehouses, and whatnot. Privatizing things that are necessary, like a law enforcement program. Like, I think a lot of people, especially on the left, conflate police as they are today with a law enforcement program or, or organization. So when I say police are necessary, uh, a lot of people might take that to mean that I'm, I'm uh, agreeing that the police as they currently exist are a good and necessary thing. And I, that couldn't be further from the truth. But particularly while we continue to live in a capitalist enterprise with the rampant inequality we have, police some sort of law enforcement uh, organization is going to be necessary. Now, it can be a lot better than our current police force. It can be a lot more humane, a lot more empathetic, a lot more, uh, a lot more positive than what we currently have. But a law enforcement organization is going to be necessary even in a socialist utopia. There will still be laws and people who break those laws. They're just going to break different laws and for different reasons. I'm not saying that socialism will create this wonderful utopia where no one wants to break the laws. No, people are still going to break laws and we need some, some means of uh, some, some repercussions for breaking those laws. So, while we still live in this capitalist hellscape, we're going to need police even more. We're going to need law enforcement even more, but we can change it so that it is a better system. Privatizing doesn't do that. Privatizing makes them answerable only to the people who own the business, which at best is a disparate group of uh, stockholders, and at worst is a one or a handful of people who privately own the the corporation or the business or LLC, whatever the fuck it is. And that privatizing police will just exacerbate the issues with police. It will not solve them. 
So let's see how they uh, they claim it's going to solve these issues. By a monopoly from the government. But it turns out in history and even in modern times, there's plenty of private examples of people working to create order and safety in society. Edward St it's worth noting that uh, these places are able to function because they're primarily hired by private interests, either uh, private companies to serve as security or police for their uh, compounds or wealthy gated type communities where they again serve as private security for those areas they don't have to worry about the the the, the standard 911 call that you might get from uh you know for a cat stuck in a tree or whatever or domestic disturbances because wealthier people tend to not have the kind of domestic disturbances that poorer people do they won't deal with uh, you know, mental health issues as much because wealthy people are able to get the mental health uh, help they need. So this idea that we can just replace our existing police with private police forces and it will be better all around is just absurd because the existing private police success stories, such as they are, work because they aren't doing everything that police are expected to do. Which is why we call them for defunding the police, because we don't want the police to do everything they're expected to do currently. We want people who are better trained and better able to handle those things. Stringham is the president of the American Institute for Economic Research and the author of Private Governance, Creating Order in Economic and Social Life. If you look closely, in many cases, you see lots of private sources of order. That goes all the way from simple things like unarmed security guards, that goes all the way up through very advanced sets of private legal self-regulatory organizations. So certain places like Harvard University, MIT, Massachusetts General Hospital have fully deputized private police. Stringham also Yes, who don't have to worry as much about, again, like the MIT police probably most have to worry about uh, one of the students there being drunk in public or getting into a fight or something. They don't have to deal with the kind of criminality that happens in like poor neighborhoods or... Uh, the kind of domestic disturbance that would happen in poor neighborhoods. There's probably very few domestic disturbances at all in, in MIT, just because there aren't that many uh, domestic situations at MIT. I'm not saying anything about people who go to MIT. I'm saying that most people aren't in, a, a lot of people aren't in the kind of committed relationship that leads to domestic disturbances in college. And if they are, they probably aren't living on campus where they would be subject to MIT police. They're probably living off campus where they're going to be, uh, and MIT's in Boston, right? So Boston police. Yeah, exactly. I rate lump. It's not like they haven't opened up fire on crowds of, let's say, striking workers in the past. Yeah. Points to what happened in San Francisco during the gold rush. And they actually didn't have a police force at all. So by uh, the late 1840s, early 1850s, they started creating a small government police force, but they were basically powerless. And so at the same time, the private citizens said, we need to create our own private... So let me clarify here that I have no issue with a... With a uh... A neighborhood or a group of neighborhoods or whatever getting together and creating their own collaborative community policing project where the members of it are just chosen by the community and are answerable to the community that is perfect and exactly the kind of uh, policing I will be a hundred and ten percent behind but what privatizing what they're talking about here is creating uh, corporations where they hire failed policemen and security guards to work as police for these private organizations and they're not answerable to the community they're not answerable to the public 
they're answerable to whoever writes their paycheck. So it's funny that they're using what is effectively uh, community community aid, uh, the the direct organization of the members of a community to police their community with members of their community to support the idea of privatizing police, which is a totally different animal. Private police force. In Chinatown, the government police were not very into helping the residents of Chinatown, and they also relied on private policing. So this is something that is not just abstract and theoretical, but something that has been around in San Francisco since the very early days. Private governance is pervasive. It's all around us in history and in modern times. And the better it works, the less we see it. We don't police people, we protect them. Police are law enforcement officers. So essentially their task is based on negative metrics, arresting people for drugs or violence that has already occurred, which is not protection. Dale Brown is the founder of Detroit Threat Management Centers, which has been providing private protection in the Motor City since 1995. We find ways to protect people even from prosecution. Essentially, we create conditions where no violence occurs and no prosecution occurs because no violence occurs. Detroit Threat Management Centers operates as a for-profit security company that provides bodyguards, works with homeowners associations, and secures precious cargo delivery. But it also runs an Yeah, there we go. Bodyguards, for people wealthy enough to afford bodyguards, homeowners associations, which, while not exclusively in wealthier neighborhoods, are pretty heavily tied to wealthier neighborhoods, and securing precious cargo. If you're wealthy enough to transport precious cargo, well then, hmm. This would leave poor areas undefend, unprotected or underprotected. Uh, even less protection than they have now, which is very little. So while his threat management uh, center seems like a good idea, and he may even have good intentions, like truly good intentions, not just thinks he has good intentions, this will last only as long as he is solely in charge of it and will stop being true as soon as he stops being uh, the sole proprietor if he goes public or if he retires or what have you then whatever his tone at the top will change to whomever takes his place i don't know i rate lump that's a good question why do they have a biohazard symbol as their logo an educational academy in which graduates volunteer to provide free security to domestic violence victims and other vulnerable individuals who detroit city police don't protect we hunt predators out of the community we deny them the opportunity to rape, rob, and kill the families. That's our primary function. In 2017, Detroit Threat Management Center employees stopped carrying guns. You really want to avoid the use of force and violence whenever possible. It's positive. It's appropriate. It's... Again, I like this dude's message. I like what he's saying. But he's put, a pl put into place a system which can very easily be used to crack down on vulnerable people if he is no longer the one setting these policies. That's why I disagree with private policing in general, again, unless it's specifically and explicitly the community coming together to form their police, form their own like neighborhood watch type thing. Because once you bring someone out of, from outside the community in to police it, they're no longer answerable to the community and they don't, they're going to do whatever their policies are, which apparently he's got some good policies. They don't carry guns. Awesome. They seek to uh, help domestic violence uh, victims and, and to help resolve these issues without violence. Awesome. A hundred percent. I applaud him and appreciate his efforts. But it's not changing the system. It's just sort of creating a temporary alternative for as long as he's in charge. What creates a better quality of life for everyone? One of the main problems that we see with bureaucracy and monopoly is a lack of concern for consumer well-being. Well, accountability and responsibility are intrinsic in the private sector. We have real-time audio and video in each vehicle. They're actually all watching each other while they're on duty. And I train my staff members 
constantly. And then you have to know law. So we constantly study the law. We go through scenarios and they're constantly coached into better. As much as I've been kind of singing this dude's praises, it's worth noting how much of his, uh, uh, the, the aesthetic and the, the clips that are being used here highlight a kind of paramilitary attitude. I mean, they're all wearing the fatigues and the vests and whatnot, and they're training in takedown techniques and combat. And while, while I will agree that, especially if we're talking about um, these kind of uh, things he's gonna, they're going to be responding to, having some knowledge of takedown techniques is good. Is that the only training they have? He talks about learning the law, you know, how much training, how much time is devoted to that. And how do they screen their applicants to make sure that they're there to help the community and not just there to legitimately beat the shit out of people, which is a big problem with police. Better performance. So I don't have better people. I have a system. And that system is what makes us capable. We already have more private security in various forms in the United States than we have government police. And we can think about ways that we can continue to expand in that direction for those people who are worried about militarized or violent police and thinking about ways to replace them with alternatives we don't need to dream up some abstract ideals and think about how things might be we can actually look at how private security how private policing already exists draw from best practices and say look we do have markets and we can rely more on markets and less on a coercive government monopoly. Holy shit. Yeah, that's uh, that's an ANCAP's dream right there. Just just have uh, a bunch of police uh, who are answerable to their shareholders and the, their business owners. But the market will serve. And it completely cuts out poor people or, or anyone who can't afford to hire a private security firm. That sounds great. Like, I thought they'd actually make an argument, but it's just, well, we've had private security before and it's not caused a problem. Because they're not used to respond to the things that generally cause problems. Like... The issue is not police responding to drunk frat boys at a college or I suppose the, the hospital police uh, might have a little bit of issue with uh, with um, people with mental issues or what have you responding to that. Uh, I don't know if they receive any different training regards to that, uh, but it doesn't matter because the primary issue is when they respond to poor people who do the, the kind of things that police, uh, that, that are bread and butter for police, uh, stealing, drugs, um, even speeding is kind of a, uh, a, a poor person crime uh, for two reasons. One, because wealthy people can just pay the fine and don't give a shit. And two, because poor people are more likely to be in a position where they have to rush somewhere so they'll risk speeding. Not to say that wealthy people don't, but again, they can usually just pay the fine and don't give a shit. Like, it just costs X amount of dollars to speed in this area. That's the ticket to to do that. Whereas to poor people, getting a $200 speeding ticket could mean that they aren't able to pay their rent next month. Or they can pay their rent, but they have to live on, like, ramen and lentil beans if they can scrounge together the change to buy it. Like, that's the difference. And that's why privatizing police would not be the the positive thing you think it is unless you actually don't care about poor people. Yeah, this message brought to you by Brinks, Securitas, and the Pinkertons. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. Remember to like, share, and leave a comment because it helps me. Subscribe and ring that bell to help you. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.